wasn't mentioned as opposed to any sexual misconduct? Uh, there was no reference to sexual misconduct with minors. Um, we've heard from others that pedophilia has been understood by some in the church as sexual activity with prepubescent children, but not adolescent children. What do you say to that? Uh, yeah, that wasn't a factor in my thinking. But are you aware of the discussion about the appropriate use of the word pedophilia? Um, uh, yes, I am. And uh, it's not unknown, of course, for priests to have engaged in uh, sexual activity with adolescent <coughs> boys, is it? That's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and when uh, you say, the other consultant refers to the bishop referring to homosexual activity, many in the church would see homosexual activity as including activity, sexual activity with adolescents who are, have not come of age, wouldn't they? Um, I, I don't think people would... Uh, uh, that's a, a theoretical... Uh, possible classification, but uh, in these sorts of discussions, I don't think that decision, that distinction would have been made. When you say you don't think the distinction would have been made, there would be, would there not in the church, to your knowledge, a somewhat different view taken of a homosexual relationship with a post-adolescent, but nevertheless minor, as opposed to abuse of a prepubescent child? Yes, uh, there is. Uh, I think the literature uh, clearly distinguishes that. Yeah. And uh, there is a recognition uh, in the church uh, among some writers and speakers uh, of that distinction. Now, to your knowledge, there are many priests who have engaged in sexual activity, aren't there? Uh, too many. Uh, if a priest engages in sexual activity, it doesn't follow, as a matter of course, that it's necessary to move them, does it? Um, no, not necessarily. But if there was, uh, a, say, a long-term adult uh, relationship or a source of what we might describe uh, temptation, that would be a reason uh, to shift a person. Well, another reason to shift a person is if the sexual activity becomes a matter of public scandal. Correct? That is correct. Now, are we to understand that what you, at the very least, knew was that Ridsdale's sexual activity had become a matter of public scandal, making it necessary to move him? No, I did not know that, because I did not know... Uh, that the issue was his uh, um, pedophilia um, activities or underage sexual activity. I, I didn't ask you a question. Activity that, with underage people. I didn't ask you a question in those terms. I just asked you generally. For it to become necessary to move a priest who has engaged in sexual activity, the fact that the sexual activity, be it with adults or otherwise, has it become a matter of public scandal is what would make it necessary to move them. Is that not so? That, that is one, uh, one reason for such a move. Right. And when we're looking at the minute, as uh, you've been doing with Mr. Nairs, and the bishop advises that it's become necessary for Ridsdale to move from the parish, um, plainly, one of the likely reasons for him being moved is that his activities have become a matter of public scandal. Correct? That is correct. And the nature of that public scandal would, of course, be of real interest to you as a consultant, wouldn't it? Um, yes. You would want but, to know. Uh, you would I, want, it, sorry. In well, I don't think there's any reference there to a public scandal. I, I uh, obviously, it's, uh, that is one such, uh, one such possibility. It was actually the situation... But the bishop did not uh, 
to speak explicitly of a public scandal. No, but it you... Could have been, uh, it could have been personal moral reasons, uh, um, other personal reasons why Ridsdale uh, had to be shifted. Well, there might have been, but as we've uh, discussed, you and I, one of the uh, real possibilities was that his activity had become a matter of public scandal, wasn't it? That is one possibility amongst uh, a number. Yeah. And you, as a responsible consultant, would want to know, you would be very concerned to know whether or not the reason was because Ridsdale's activities had become a matter of public scandal, wouldn't you? I, I would have been uh, um, much more... I would have been, it would have been important to know whether the public scandal touched on uh, underage sexual activity or the public scandal uh, was of uh, another nature, say, drinking or uh, quarrelling uh, or um, adult sexual activity. Well, wh whatever it was, public scandal brings real problems for the church, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. And you, again, as a consultant exercising your responsibilities, would want to know what the situation was so that you could contribute to resolving it in a way which did not increase the damage to the church, wouldn't you? Um, yes, the, but uh, uh, as always, the lead was given by the bishop and the presumption was that the bishop was basically um, telling the truth. And I had no reason to think that uh, behind these presenting reasons there was a different world of reality. Well, as you told Ms. Finesse, you actually don't have any recollection of what the bishop said at this meeting, do you? No, but I do know the basis on which uh, I thought, uh, and I do know the basis on which he should have proceeded. Um, I'll leave Miss Finesse to take that up if she wants to. <laughs> I think where we're up to, Cardinal, is that you don't have any recollection of what was said at the meeting, although you have a recollection of what was not said. Is that fair? I have studied the minutes of this uh, meeting that took place uh, 30, over 30 years ago, and in the light uh, of those minutes, I am quite happy to accept them. That was not my question. I'll repeat it, Cardinal. You do not have any recollection of what was said at the meeting, although you have a recollection of what was not said. Is that right? Um, I, I wonder whether that is uh, misleading. Um, in the uh, independent of the minutes, um, I do know the basis on which we uh, proceeded. And uh, that was that when the, uh, a, a priest could be shifted for non-criminal activities, and the reasons would not necessarily be given. Um, the clear expectation was if there was uh, criminal ac uh, activity, that would be uh, uh, mentioned. Now, it could be that the consultants would decide to give another chance. Um, but uh, as, for example, in Day's, uh, in Day's case, uh, the, his... Uh, moral failures were explicitly mentioned to the uh, uh, to the consultants. I would have expected that exactly uh, the same thing would be provided to us as was given to the consultants about uh, John Day. Is that the end of your answer, Cardinal? Um, yes, but I'm happy to try to explain it any further if you would... Uh, something is unclear. You said in your answer that the clear expectation was if there was criminal activity that would be mentioned. 
Now, what was the basis of that clear expectation? Where did you um, get that clear expectation from, Cardinal? Uh, from my uh, experience, from my uh, general uh, way of thinking, and uh, such a conclusion is justified uh, from the minutes uh, of the Ballarat uh, con uh, consultants. The clear expectation that you refer to can only be properly held if there had been a discussion about criminal activity and that that was mentioned at a consultors' meeting in respect of someone. That no, I don't the think that... Uh, I think there are a number of reasons why it could properly be held, and I've outlined my reasons. Well, Cardinal, you've said that the clear expectation was if there was criminal activity, that would be mentioned. There must be a basis for you to have held that uh, expectation and held it clearly that criminal activity would be mentioned. It must have been discussed at some stage. No, there's no such uh, conclusion necessary at all. Um, we're talking about shifting uh, priests from one position of responsibility to another. It's a common sense uh, uh, conclusion that if there was uh, a record of uh, a criminal activity, uh, the, it's totally uh, reasonable to expect that that would be mentioned. Uh, so that other people would not be put into danger. So I take it you've been at a consultor's meeting where it has been mentioned that there is a record of criminal activity? I don't think that was ever the case uh, in Ballarat. Well, if that's the case, how can you have had a clear expectation that criminal activity would be mentioned if it had never happened? I've already explained that uh, two or three times. Cardinal, um, by the time of this meeting, of course, um, the Bishop and other consultants knew that Ridsdale had been engaging in criminal activity, didn't they? Some consultants certainly did. I, I take it... As it, well as Malcolm. I take it it follows from what you told Miss Finesse that you would have expected as a matter of course that you would have been told about those criminal activities? I, I certainly do. Right. And given that you have no recollection of what actually happened at the meeting, is it reasonable for us to assume that you were told? No, to, to completely... Uh, that's certainly not my evidence. There was no reference uh, to pedophilia at uh, any of the meetings of the Ballarat consultants uh, that, of a, of a, that I attended, uh, that a, a priest uh, had committed that and people wanted to shift him to another parish. What, what about offending against children or abusing children? You say that wasn't mentioned? Um, that I certainly do. But again, I, I, we are to understand you actually have no recollection of the meeting and what was said? Um, no, I think that is an overstatement. I think uh, I'm quite happy to accept the minutes of the meeting. And I don't think that's at all unreasonable about uh, something that occurred over 30 years ago. Okay. Um, of course, in minutes of this nature, given the sensitivity of the subject matter, it would not be uncommon for um, gentle and somewhat euphemistic language to be used, would it? No? Um, and that gentle and euphemistic language that you described was uh, regularly uh, used by uh, Bishop Malkerns on these occasions um, so that some uh, of us were kept in the dark. <coughs> Well, it's, it's open to assume that the language in the minutes is speaking euphemistically, isn't it? Um, I'm not aware of any uh, uh, evidence uh, that suggests the minutes are misleading. 
No, but they may not tell all. Perhaps? Uh, that's the case with all minutes. Now, you said earlier in an answer to a question, uh, Cardinal, that, for example, in Day's case, his moral failures were explicitly mentioned to the consultors. Now... I, I, I believe that's in the minutes. I believe so. Well, the minutes in relation to Day referred to the reasons for the resignation being given, and I will tell you the tab in Day's minutes. Good. Perhaps we can... While well, that's um, coming up, Cardinal, you continued to say, I would have expected that exactly the same thing would be provided to us as was given to the consultors about day. Um, let, let us see what uh, was said with day, but I, uh, my basic uh, mm -hmm. uh, position uh, is the common sense one that uh, if there was criminal activity, repeated criminal activity, that that would be mentioned, and uh, obviously that would be a reason why uh, the people would re refuse to go along with the appointment. So in relation to Day, which is in the Day Tender Bundle, tab 36, and these are the minutes of the meeting in 1972, can someone provide that to you? Do you have that, Cardinal? I did. Now, it says that his lordship outlined the circumstances which have led to the resignation of Monsignor J. Day from the parish of Mildura. Now, do you see that? I do, yes. And you gave evidence earlier that you would have expected that exactly the same thing would be provided to us as was given to the consultors about day. Now, you accepted yesterday that from the evidence, uh, the circumstances which had led to his resignation were in relation to a police investigation of serious sexual assault and that that information was provided to the consultors. That's what I concluded from these minutes. Mm. Now, the minutes in relation to Ridsdale leaving Mortlake are not dissimilar, are they? They are, it has become necessary to move Ridsdale out of Mortlake. Now, that, I suggest, implies that the necessity was the subject of reasons. Doesn't that follow? Uh, it does, but in one case, uh, these minutes uh, say with Day that the bishop outlined the circumstances that uh, certainly did not happen um, with uh, Ridsdale shifting. So you're suggesting, are you, that unless... That, the... Uh, the necessity was mentioned outlined. I'm sorry, Cardinal? In one case, uh, the minutes uh, say that his lordship uh, outlined the circumstances which led uh, uh, me to uh, conclude they're talking about the police investigation. Uh, whereas on the other one, it is simply said that it's, became nece it's become necessary to, to shift it. But you know, don't you, that what Monsignor uh, Fiscalini, Nolan and Bush Bishop Mulkerns knew before that meeting was that he had to get out of Mortlake because of the stream of complaints of sexual abuse against him. We know now, I, don't I we? Do know, I, I do know now that they knew that. But they knew that then, didn't they? At yes, and I didn't. Well, the fact that they knew it then suggests, doesn't it, that similar to Day, 
that information was the subject of the reason to be, that it became necessary to move him. You accept that, don't you? Uh, could you repeat that, please? Certainly. You accept from what Fiscalini, Nolan and Mulkerns knew that in their minds it was necessary to move him because of the complaints of sexual assault against him. Now, you accept that? I do. And I do. In relation to Day, the bishop provided the circumstances of his resignation because that information was available to him, that is, the police investigation. That's right? Um, yes, it says there clearly he outlined the circumstances, and I presume that would have been done accurately. And in relation to the Mortlake minutes, uh, the bishop knew why it had become necessary to have Ridsdale leave Mortlake, and it follows, doesn't it, that he told those there what those reasons were? It uh, doesn't follow at all, and it's quite compatible with his other practices, and uh, that uh, he just said that it was necessary, and he never mentioned that it was necessary because of any criminal activity. So are you saying that if the words in the minutes were outlined the reasons for the uh, necessity to move, then you would accept that he had told the consultants present? Is that how we're to understand it? No, I would not. Uh, I, no, I would not say that because I was uh, present at that uh, meeting and if that had been the case, criminal activity had been mentioned, I would certainly have remembered it. If I can just come back to the criminal activity, uh, Cardinal, can I ask you again, what is the basis for your clear expectation that criminal activity would be raised? Uh, because um, of the danger that such criminal activity presented uh, uh, to children. Uh, at that stage, uh, while there might not have been the sensitivity to the problem there is now, it was clearly um, um, abhorrent. Well, that's the reason... Recognize... I'm sorry, Cardinal. No, I think um, I'm, I'm happy to wait for the next question. What you answered was the reason why criminal activity would be raised, but not the basis upon which you had a clear expectation that it would be. Well, I could just try to repeat what I've said two or three uh, times, and that is that I believe that it is, uh, that is a common sense uh, uh, expectation, and the basis uh, on which we've always moved in the church, uh, we do not uh, propose to shift priests, uh, promote them um, when they have, it's been shown they've been